what we're going to do now is create a new project in Unity where we will import all of these VR sample assets that were created by Unity. Uh, this is not going to be the same project where we will create our game. This is just a project that I'm setting up so that I can import all of these scenes and I can run them. And what we'll do next is just grab the files that we're interested in and move those to our actual game project. So I'm going to call this project VR samples. And I'm going to go here and create project. When the project is created, I want now to go to the asset store and grab these VR sample files. Uh, for that, there are different options. One of them is to go to window and then find the asset store. This will open the asset store inside of Unity. And from here, we can just type VR samples. And in the results, we'll find this VR samples uh, files uh, package that is created by Unity. So this is the official VR samples. And this is what we'll be doing. I'm going to type in here, click on update. So the project has completed importing downloading and I'm going to click import and in here I get this import unity package window and what I'm going to do is just import everything and as I mentioned we are not going to build our game from this project we just want this uh, we just want all the files so that we can run the different scenes and so you can explore as well everything that's included in here so I'm going to click on import Okay, so everything has been imported now and this would have taken some time because there were a lot of files here that needed to be imported. Um, you will see in this readme file that it says that there is a uh, there, there are video instructions that accompany this uh, package. Well, at the time of this recording, there's actually no video instructions that do it. What uh, you can find is this official virtual reality tutorial that includes an overview of what's in this in this package so i um, it is a good idea to have a, a look at these things and this project in particular at uh, this tutorial is something that you will keep on coming back in the future so uh, you can start by just having a, a quick overview and an idea of what's out what's in there but as you work on your games you will want to come back and see if there were other bits and pieces that you can take from this from this part okay so regarding the project itself it includes a few demos and you can run any of them by going to the VR sample scenes folder and then there's a folder called scenes. So if you go into any of these scenes, for example, main menu, you'll be able to load that scene and this will work out of the box with the Oculus Rift and the Gear VR and also um, with the HTC Vive, but you'll need to be using the mouse for all the uh, click interactions. So it's not gonna work with the controllers. Um, so you have a lot of stuff here and uh, it's really worth to spend the time just browsing through it and exploring a little bit. Um, but if you scroll down and you go to VR standard assets, this is something that's gonna be very important for us because these are things that we'll be using in our games. Inside of VR standard assets, there's a folder called scripts, which contains a few files that are all going to be used at a certain point or that you might want to use. So these are all um, libraries that uh, we want to use. And a few of the features implemented in these libraries are also implemented in, in particular uh, branded SDKs, for example, the Oculus SDK or the Steam VR SDK. And uh, in my opinion, whenever you, um, you have to choose. I always prefer to go with the standard assets with something that is natively supported by Unity and only use the features of the specific SDKs for things that are really specific to that particular platform. For example, something like an, um, an eye ray caster, which I'm going to explain in a little bit, or a reticle a user interaction element are things that you will find in other SDKs and I prefer to use the ones that, that are provided here just so that I make my game in a way that's uh, more compatible with Unity and less dependent on the different vendors and how those things can change and also it's more future, it's a more future-proof uh, approach because as new VR platform comes out you might want to target those platforms and having to go from a very SDK-based solution to something more general is quite a lot of work and it can really slow you down 
when you want to access some new platforms that might come out. Unity's native VR implementation is based on the Unity Engine.VR namespace, which you can find in the Unity documentation. So if you go to your Unity documentation and go to Unity Engine.VR, you'll see a few classes that provide this native support that we've been talking about. And there are many VR platforms already supported here and new ones are being added on each new version of Unity. So that is the lower level support that uh, that you can get. And then built on top of that, we have, as I mentioned, the um, standard, the VR standard assets. So we saw that there were a few scripts in that folder. There are some other scripts that are scattered around this VR sample scene. So we are going to be using some of those as well. And basically what we'll do at the end of this lesson is just go and fish for some scripts that we will be using later. Um, all the time that you spend trying to figure out how the VR sample scenes work by looking at the different elements, by exploring the inspector, even if it doesn't make any sense at first, uh, will eventually be helpful to your to your VR skills. Um, so let me just talk about these six files and give you an idea of what each one is for. Um, we will be using some of them later in the course. Okay, the the first one that I'm going to talk about is the easiest one, which is the VR frames per second counter. This is basically, as the name suggests, a way for us to see the frames per second in our game in virtual reality. And the way you use it is to simply create a text um, element in your game and then you give it the FPS counter script. And that is just the basics of how, of how that works. Now, these three files here, the I Raycaster and the interactive item and input are related to each other. And it's best explained with a diagram. Let's say that this is you in virtual reality. So you've got your headset and that is you. Um, the, the first one that I'm going to talk about is the I Raycaster. A Raycaster in Unity is a ray that is used to detect the location of a collider. So you throw a raycaster that always has a certain origin and a certain length and a certain direction. In this case, it's pointing that way. And this raycaster is used to detect the presence of a collider. And the eye raycaster is simply a raycaster that is used for gaze, gaze based interactions. What the I Raycaster class is going to do is just give you this Raycaster that comes out of your of your uh, where you're looking at and it can be used to interact with objects. And so these are all related to each other. The interactive item is a component that you would give an item itself, an item that has a collider would be made an interactive item and that will allow it to be detected by the eye Raycaster. And then the VR input is um, it works alongside these other elements, as in you can have click events on your interactive items when using the Raycaster. So for example, you are looking at a certain box, and so you are detecting that box with your eye Raycaster. That box needs to be set as an interactive item, and then you can you can click on your on your VR headset and that will or in your control, and that will uh, pass on that uh, event to the box. And same thing with you can have like a double click and a few other a few other events. So these three elements are related to each other. You normally want to use all of them. Um, so what else do we have here? The tracking reset is a script that I don't use very often and it's used for when you want to reset the position of your headset after pausing your game. So it wouldn't be used in that many cases, uh, but it's there for you to use. And the VR device manager has the uh, main purpose of letting you set up the render scale configuration. And I'm also going to use a diagram to explain what render scale is. Um, let's say that you are looking at an image that has a certain amount of pixels. And when the render scale is, is not modified, 
or it's set to one, the pixels that you will see are the same amount of pixels that you had. If the render scale is set to a number smaller than one, um, that is basically an approximation for performance. And if it's set to 0.5, for instance, it's like you're taking um, four of these pixels and you are uh, drawing them as one single pixel. So it is a way to basically draw at a smaller resolution, but scaled up so that it will use the same space, the, the same area, uh, but uh, with less amount of pixels and each pixel is made bigger. Uh, and if you make, um, if you use a number higher than one, uh, what you end up doing is actually subdividing the original pixel into even smaller pixels. So that if, if you want to have something that is very sharp, that is the approach that will be used. And different VR heads, headsets will have their own render scale. Um, so let me add this word here. This is a render scale. So that is something that is a bit more advanced and that you would want to use in some situations. And it is something that, uh, that you can read about in the virtual reality tutorial, in particular in the getting started in VR development. There are some, some examples on the kind of effect that you can have. The lower the render scale, the worse than the image will look, but then the performance is better. So it's sort of a trade-off that you have at your disposal. Um, so all of those files are located in, in that folder that I showed you before, but there are some other scripts that we're also gonna be grabbing out of this VR samples package. It's basically we're looting here and just grabbing everything that we need for our project. Um, there is a script for the reticle and one for the camera uh, that's called camera UI. Um, what these do, the reticle uh, works alongside this, these elements here. And what it does, it provides you like a pointer that you see in your scene. And the camera UI, the other script, it works alongside the reticle and it allows you to have that reticle shown in, in the right way by using um, something that we'll cover in the next lecture, but it is a world space canvas. Okay. So now it is time to actually go and, and fish for our files and, and create a folder that we can then import into any other project and that has just the essentials that we need. So I've got my Unity project here the, with the VR sample scene. And I also have an empty object, an empty folder that I'm gonna be using then in my projects. Um, so the files that we are gonna grab from here, if we go to assets, VR standard assets, we are going to grab this whole scripts folder and that is something that we'll be using. So that script contains all the files that I already show you. I'm gonna delete these meta files. They're, they're generated by Unity automatically. So they'll be generated for us anyway. Uh, so that includes the files that I talked about. And then there are some other files in here that I'm interested in. Um, let's go to sample scenes and then go to the uh, scripts folder. And in here, utils. And this has a lot of, a lot of uh, files that you may want to use. So uh, the ones that we'll be using are the reticle and the and the camera UI. But as I mentioned before, the more time you spend exploring these standards, uh, standard assets, the the more that you will learn that things that can be useful for other projects. So I'm gonna copy those files in here. And if you if you actually open them, you'll see that they all use the same namespace. So it's a bit strange that they're not on the same folder, but that's just how they're presented to us. Besides script, there are a couple of other things that I want. One of them is shaders. And I want a particular shader that will be used in the reticle. Again, that will be covered in the next lesson. Um, but it is inside of this shaders folder and it is the UI overlay shader. It's a shader that uh, makes sure that the reticle is always showing on top the other elements. So we do want to bring that shader with us. And then there is there are also some textures the texture for the reticle, basically. So if we go to textures here, and then we go to UI, you will see a few images, and let's make them bigger. And so there are there are a couple of reticles here that I want. They are not showing in this, in this editor, so I'm gonna find them in here, in Unity. So that's all inside of um, textures and then UI. So there are different types of reticles that you, uh, so you can pick whichever you like. I'm gonna grab the, the one with the circle 
And I'm also gonna grab the one that's just a dot. And that is literally just a, a bitmap image or a, a TIFF image. You can you can make your, your own on paint or on any program as long as you can add the transparency. So you can't really do it in paint, but you can add it on any program. So uh, what, I, what I really wanna say is that this is nothing but an image. It's nothing more than just an image that you could make yourself. Okay, so I don't want that uh, GUI reticle and GUI target. So if we go back here, I want that, that GUI reticle and the GUI target. Okay, so I want those two and I'm gonna put, place them in here. All right, so this VR standard assets folder is something that we will use in our project. And as I mentioned before, you can always explore and uh, spend some time looking at how this is all implemented because it will give you a lot of insights on how VR works. And, and then again, we're not gonna be using all the things here. And there are many things that can be implemented even in a simpler way that it's done in here, but it's a great learning exercise. And also the code itself is really well made. So that's also worth looking at. Uh, now I have an open challenge for you. So let's bring that up. The open challenge is for you to open this main menu scene in the VR samples package and concentrate on the camera. Open the camera and have a look of all the elements that are placed there and try to get an idea of how the reticle works. It, it's, I'm really giving you, this is like a puzzle with a lot of pieces and we're gonna put all those pieces together one by one so it'll be very easy to follow. But it's a good exercise to try to, to, try to figure it out uh, before I give you a solution. So have a look and see, um, at least you'll get an idea on what, what the elements uh, are doing and how they're connected to each other. And then we'll look into it in the next lecture.